What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and continue learning about rules and norms you should really know when visiting a London pub, part two. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go check that out or stay right here in part two. It's perfectly fine as well, but in part one, I started learning about tips and tricks and just how to how to act normal and in a, in a pub in a, Lon a true London pub there's actually a surprising amount of differences because there are no pubs in the United States the the only thing I can even compare this to is an American bar which is nothing like a British pub or a London pub that's that's the biggest thing I've learned so honestly of all the sort of norms and rules for pubs that I learned in part one. No one thing is like that huge. I wouldn't get thrown out of the pub, probably. <laughs> what do I know? Uh, for violating one of these sort of norms. But I truly believe American, an American like myself would actually have a fair shot at violating every single one of these rules, funny enough, which then you kind of would be in trouble, like barely functioning in the pub at that point. Like in part one, I learned about how you have to get up off your table, out of your seat, and go place your order at the bar. Whereas in, Amer in America, you might actually expect a lot of the time a waiter or someone, a staff member to come to your table and take your order. So that would be a bit confusing. We'd end up sitting there all day <laughs> if we didn't know this. Don't skip the queue. That's a big one. Do it. If nothing else, do not cut the line. Don't skip ahead of the queue. Uh, I have that burned into my brain at this point, don't worry. And there was there was a bit about tipping, how different tipping is in America. You have to tip or they're gonna give you a dirty look and put something weird in your drink <laughs> the next time you come, they're gonna remember you. Whereas in Britain, uh, in, in, in a London pub, it, it, it seems like almost something that's kind of uncommon. It's a bonus. If, if, if you think someone did a fantastic job, you can leave a tip, but it's not expected. Whereas in America, it is definitely expected. So, honest, a lot of a lot of pretty substantial differences in a way. So this has been real interesting, and I'm I'm excited to actually, and a little scared, <laughs> a little nervous to learn about what else uh, you need to know when visiting a London pub. So let's find out. Make sure you say cheers to everybody that you're with before you start your drink. That is a- <laughs> Wait, what? Make sure you say cheers before you drink. <laughs> is this, is this, uh, mandatory? Can you, like, how, how required is this? Not that I have any reason I can think of not to engage in the cheersing, the cheering of the drink, but <laughs> this is certainly, man, how common is this in the United States? Hit or miss, I guess. It's just sometimes people do it for to be silly or fun. Where this makes it seem like it's actually kind of a serious thing you want to do. A tradition you do in a British pub. Is that fair to say? Make sure you say cheers to everybody that you're with before you start your drink. Okay. That is a big cultural yes here in the UK. To make sure you raise your glass up, clink it with everybody else's, say cheers to everyone and look them in the eye before you have your first sip. Oh gosh, lift it up, look in the eye. Cheers. <laughs> I'm sure I just did it completely. <laughs> There's the American version. Cheers. I learned how to do this in a YouTube video once. Cheers. <laughs> they'd be like, okay, why did we invite the American here? But this does seem more, I'm sure it's very lighthearted and a fun thing to do, but it seems like it'd be very noticeable if this did not happen. Whereas in America, it's like people will say cheers, people won't say cheers, it's whatever. It's, it's if you think about it or or not, basically. Because it acknowledges that you're all friends and you're all gathered to have a good time. I like it. I mean, that that is fun. It's just in good fun, in good friendship. So uh, honestly, I like it. Don't miss that one. Cheers. <laughs> wow, okay. See, that's good to know, honestly. I wouldn't wanna, I, I now I'm curious, would it be offensive 
to start drinking your beer before doing the cheers? Would that be like, how, how offensive would that actually be, I wonder? Just outside the Windsor Castle, and I'm gonna go inside and have a gin and tonic. Ah. Let's go. Man, every, every single pub she shows in this video is so cool looking. Again, I was saying this before, such a, a, a fun, sort of vintage, authentic atmosphere these pubs have. Maybe especially in London, I suppose, but totally different than what you see at American bars, I have to say. This is so much nicer, classier as well. Gin is a distilled alcoholic spirit that comes mostly from juniper berries. And gin is actually okay. the most popular spirit here in the UK now. So you will always see loads of people at the bar ordering a oh, gin. Oh, gin, okay. Tonic, because it pairs really well with tonic. It usually comes like this when you order it and then. I'm not sure I've ever had gin. I know the, I know gin and tonic, like that phrase. Gin is very, very popular. In, in the UK, huh? I'm not sure I've ever had it. Pour it yourself. Huh, never thought Mario? about it. Gin. Okay. When you hear the bell at the pub, it's never a good thing. It usually <laughs> happens around 10.30 and the first bell means that it is last call. So if you- There's a bell. There's a bell? This is fun. Or maybe not, because it means it's closing time. There's actually a, a big physical bell. Is that common in most pubs in the UK? Is that a London thing? This is, I mean, that's kind of awesome. And I like that there is an actual physical bell. That is certainly not a thing in the United States, but I wish it was. So each ringing of the bell kind of means something. The first ring means last call. Okay, this, this is actually really cool. If you wanna get another drink, you better get up to the bar and get one quickly. The mm. second bell means the bar is closing, can't order any more drinks, so all you can do is finish your drink and head out. Man, is that how rowdy the Brits get at the old pub? Is that like to, to pierce over the crowd through the noise? Like maybe you really need a big old bell to ring, no one is gonna miss that. It's, you can't possibly confuse what that means. So it's actually good for communicating the bad news as well. Ha! Huh. I like it. What do you wear to a pub? Oh. The answer is whatever you want. Ah. Pubs are super casual, so there's no dress code. And you might notice some people who are quite dressed up, but it's only because they've come from work or maybe they're off to another special occasion, but otherwise it's casual. Okay, that that's finally something that's similar to the United States and, and bar culture here. It's like some people, the reason they go out to the bar is to dress up and look nice and feel nice and have a good time. Some people go looking a little sloppy to relax. They dress a little cozy and that's, you know, that's okay too. <laughs> the garden, uh, the garden. I've heard of beer gardens in other videos I've, I've seen about uh, pubs. Uh, there's, there's a beer garden. I've always kind of wondered what that is. I think I'm seeing it right now. It's some area that literally has plants and you can drink there. Makes sense, it's kind of nice. Most pubs are kid friendly here in the UK. A lot of them will have kids. <laughs> that is unbelievable. That is, that is one of the biggest difference. That is the biggest difference on the list so far. This is number nine. I don't know how many there are, but that is right there. That alone speaks volumes for me. Pubs are kid friendly. That says so much. You would never in your wildest imagination, your wildest dreams ever take a child to an American bar. That, I mean, that'd be like against the law. So people would call the police on you. And like some people, they'd be like child abuse. You're bringing a child into the bar. Like what's wrong with you? It's, it's not okay. Whereas it's normal at pubs, just kind of speaks to me about how pubs are more of like a friendly gathering place. It, the purpose of the pub is just different. It's more of a family oriented space. You don't necessarily have to be drinking. 
Although many people are, from what I can tell. It's just, yeah, that that is a huge one for me. Kids' menus, a lot of high chairs, coloring books, and they generally welcome families to come, wow. especially during the day. Wow. So don't be surprised when you come into a pub and you see lots of kids around, and don't be afraid to bring the whole family. When I would have been shocked. I, I would have been absolutely stunned to see children at the pub. I would have, I genuinely would have been like, what, what is going on? Like, can kids drink? But that's the thing. Drinking isn't necessarily the point. And, you know, she was kind of alluding to the fact that families and children probably are going to the pub earlier in the day, not really so much at nighttime. Maybe there's more of a drinking atmosphere at nighttime, perhaps. When you're here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right behind me is the Ladbroke Arms, a pub in Notting Hill, and I'm gonna go have a Pims. Okay. Another nice looking pub. With a big old straw. Pims is the classic British drink to order at the pub in the summertime. Oh, it's a drink. <laughs> I thought the name of the place was Pims. I was like, yeah, Pims. I could go to somewhere called Pims. It's the drink. The drink is Pims. Okay. It's made up of Pims, which is a gin-based liquor with gin. lemonade and lots of chopped fruits and a bit of mint mixed in. Okay. It's very good. It's especially popular during Wimbledon, one of England's biggest sporting events. Ah. So when you come to a pub on a sunny day in London, order yourself a Pims cup. Okay. Very good. <laughs> I'm becoming a little educated on the, the British drinks as well. Always good. How to good. order food at a pub. Most pubs. Oh, how to order food. Is this different than ordering a drink? I guess so, huh? Serve food, and a lot of pubs serve really good food. So you have two ways to be able to have some food while you're there. First is to sit in the restaurant section of the pub, which operates more like a restaurant where they'll come over and serve you and take your order. See, that's really interesting. That was something they mentioned in part one as well. A lot of pubs seem to have a restaurant part of the pub dedicated to being a restaurant. Whereas in America, what you'll find is restaurants that have a dedicated part that is a little bar. So it's, <laughs> I don't know if that makes them the same or if that's a meaningful difference, but there you, there you go. We kind of have this. In the United States, restaurants that have little bars in them. Or if you just want to sit in the regular pub area, you can grab a menu from the bar, pick out what you want, and order your food at the bar, and then they'll come deliver it to your table. Okay, there's the difference too. Ordering your food at the bar, which is, again, not really something Americans are very used to doing and might actually be very confused about if going to a pub. But now I know Americans could just go to the restaurant part of the pub in some cases, in which case you would get a waiter, like normal. So, okay, there's kind of a couple <laughs> different sides to this. Okay, it, it makes sense to me, though. Make sure you get around. It is customary when you are at the pub with a few friends to make sure you buy a round, which basically... The round, right. <laughs> the round system. The, <laughs> right. I completely had forgotten about this. I've, I've learned about the rounds. Everyone takes turns buying drinks for everyone else. I don't know the details, but I, I understand the principle, I guess. Basically just means you buy all the drinks for everybody at one time. Yeah. It also means that if everyone's buying around, only one person has to go up to the bar at a time and queue. Do not be the person okay. that leaves the pub before you buy your round. Uh, it's very practical, sending one person up to the bar. Shorter lines, shorter queues. It's a big offense, she's saying, not to partake in the buying of the rounds. That makes sense. If everyone's doing it and you're the only one not... You're literally mooching off of them, which is no good. In America, usually everyone is kind of fend for, fend for yourself. Buy your own drink. Take care of yourself. Very American attitude, indeed. On occasion, people will buy a pitcher, a big old pitcher of beer uh, that they'll bring back to the table and everyone can pour 
their beer out of the community pitcher, and then that's kind of sharing the bill a bit if everyone buys a pitcher every every now and then. But certainly nothing that comes really close to matching how how serious the round system seems to be. Like that seems to be the hard, fast, steadfast rule, the law of going to the pub with your friends is doing is you're gonna buy it in rounds. So that from from what I understand, that seems extraordinarily common. Because you will not be invited out again. <laughs> if you skip out. How to strike up a conversation with somebody at the pub. Oh. Despite Londoners being a little bit more closed off to conversations with oh. strangers than usual, once they've got a pint or two in them, people are a lot more friendly, especially in pubs, which are really casual social settings. A great way. Right, I mean, honestly, that's true. Uh, if you're gonna strike up a conversation with somebody, I feel like the pub is where you go. People go to the pub to do that or expect it to hang out and to be social. So yeah, and the fact that there's a ton of alcohol involved only helps facilitate that. To strike up conversation is when you're in the line to get a drink mm. at the bar. Yeah. And another way is if you see a couple of people on a long table, ask them if you- Right, right, you're in the line, you're in the queue. And as an American, you just be like, hey, I, I would never dream of cutting this queue. I would never dream of of jumping ahead in the queue, just so you know. And and they'd be like, uh, uh, okay, good, good, thanks, okay. And, and and I'd be like, ah, yep, I totally struck up a conversation. You can sit on the other end of it and you might start chatting too. Oh, what was the second tip? On a long table, bar, and another way is if you see a couple of people on a long table, ask them if you can sit on the other end of it and oh. you might start chatting too. Also, okay. owners love to give recommendations for the area that they live in. So you can always ask someone for recommendations for restaurants, bars, other pubs, and that is a great way to start chatting. That was actually pretty good advice, I gotta say. <laughs> someone. Now, if it's your first time visiting a pub and visiting London, then make sure you get my free London 101 oh. guide. It has everything you need to know. Oh, is that the end? She's just talking about her guide. All right, there you have it. That was very good. That was by Love and London, and I gotta give that a like, cause I liked that. And that was actually very, very useful. I, again, really was not expecting there to be so many differences between American bars and London pubs, but there are, and some of them, you know, it doesn't really matter if you violate them, you're gonna stick out as a foreigner, as an American, you're gonna stick out, but you're gonna stick out anyway sounding like how we sound. And uh, some of these are a little more like important than others. Like making sure you order at the bar, making sure you bought, you participate in buying rounds for everybody, that kind of stuff seem, seems like actually, you, you really would not want to violate those norms or people genuinely wouldn't like you very much. So this was helpful all around and honestly pretty fascinating to learn about the differences. So I enjoyed this. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture and stuff about Britain I have never learned before or seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.